The candidates on stage tonight, Bill de Blasio, Tim Ryan, Jolai Ann Castro, Cory Booker, Elizabeth Warren, Bito O. A. Rourke, Amy Klobuchar, Tulsi Gabbard, Jay Inslee, and John Delaney. On Tuesday, a shocking image surfaced from the U.S., Mexico border, Scar Alberto Martinez Ramrez and his 23-month-old daughter drowned in the Rio Grande as they journeyed toward Texas hoping to seek asylum. They were captured in a photograph lying face down in the dirty water with the daughter's arm over her father's neck, huddled inside his black shirt. And late Tuesday night, word broke that Robert S. Mueller III, the former special counsel, had agreed to testify before Congress on July 17 on his investigation into Russia's interference in the 2016 election as well as President Trump's potential obstruction of justice. It's hard to imagine that these two dramatic news developments won't at play roles in tonight's debate, which begins at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. But what kind of roles? What will the candidates say about Mr. Ramrez and his daughter, and about the families and children facing danger and detention at the southern border? For many observers, the image drove home the desperation of migrants as they attempt to reach the United States. On the debate stage, Democrats could be looking for ways to draw contrasts with Mr. Trump's hardline border policies, and it could create an opening for the two Texans on stage, Mr. O. A. Rourke and Mr. Castro, to speak with authority and passion about an issue directly affecting their state. And will the Mueller testimony prompt the NBC moderators to inject the issue of impeachment into the Democratic debates in a prominent way? While some of the most prominent 2020 contenders support beginning impeachment proceedings against Mr. Trump, others, including Joseph R. Biden Jr., the former vice president, have backed a more restrained approach as some Democrats worry that a focus on impeachment could lead to political backlash. One short question ahead of the debate, will any of the candidates opt to stand on an A Apple box to boost their height? After all, Mr. de Blasio will be standing 6 foot 5 and 7 eighths of an inch high at one edge of the stage. A memo from the Democratic National Committee to the campaigns ahead of the debate said that two sizes would be available. But Ida is not clear that the extra inches could be worth the potential for ridicule. Dan Pfeiffer, a Democratic strategist, recalled working for Senator Tom Dashley in 2004 and having him sit on a pillow during a debate to appear taller. It became a big story. A lesson, looking short would have been better, a Mr. Pfeiffer wrote on Twitter. Democratic presidential hopefuls face the daunting task of vying for attention in a series of debates including 20 candidates, Thursday night, the next set of candidates will debate one another. Republicans had a similar problem in 2016. Hillary Clinton competed in two cycles of presidential primary debates, in 2016 and 2008, and she was the only woman on stage both times. Most presidential campaigns since 2000 have had a female candidate running in one or both parties a until this year, when a record six women entered the race for the Democratic nomination. So Wednesday night a S debate will make history, instead of one woman on the presidential debate stage, there will be three, Ms. Warren, Ms. Klobuchar, and Ms. Gabbard. Some Democratic activists and elected officials have expressed concerns that the women running for president are being overlooked by many voters and some donors, pointing to the fact that Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders have been leading in the polls and raising significant money. The debates are the biggest chance yet for the six women to make the most a national spotlight. Many of them have significant legislative and debate experience, and their supporters hope that their resumes and some of their personal characteristics that have received less attention a Ms. Klobuchara's sense of humor, for example a may attract notice as well. Thursday night's debate will include Kamala Harris, Kirsten Gillibrand, and Marianne Williamson. Hours before taking the debate stage, Ms. Warren traveled to Homestead, a South Florida facility for unaccompanied migrant children that is often referred to as a detention center. Homestead has become a symbol, in some political and immigration activist circles, of the Trump administration's hardline immigration policies, which once officially included separating children from their families at the U.S.-Mexico border.
Ms. Warren climbed up on a stepladder to wave to children inside the facility. A. These were children who were being marched like little soldiers, like little prisoners, from one place to another, A. She told reporters. She is one of several presidential candidates to pledge to visit the facility. Ms. Klobuchar and Jane Sanders, the wife of Bernie Sanders, also visited later Wednesday. Mr. Swalwell was there earlier this week and Mr. O. A. Rourke has said he will visit Thursday, and a host of contenders, including Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg, are expected there Friday. Patricia Mazzi contributed reporting from Homestead, Florida. How many candidates are here in Florida for the first Democratic debates? So many that one, former Governor John Hickenlooper of Colorado, was spotted on Wednesday getting asked about whether he was picking up press credentials. AIAMA candidate, A replied Mr. Hickenlooper, according to NPRS Scott Detro, who was there. Something similar happened to Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul in 2015. Candidates were nearly crossing paths inside the Adrian Arsht Center in Miami. As Senator Elizabeth Warren was doing her stage walkthrough, Senator Bernie Sanders was high in the rafters taping an interview on MSNBC. Their aides tweeted photos at one another. While most candidates were laying relatively low before the debate, Mr. Sanders had a combative response to a question about whether he would leave the race before the Democratic convention if it was clear he would not be the nominee. A. I intend to be the Democratic nominee, A. He replied. But as an NBC correspondent pressed him on complaints from A. Some people A. that his prolonged candidacy hurt Hillary Clinton, he retorted, A. A. Some people A. Say that if, maybe, the system was not rigged against, I would have won the nomination and defeated Donald Trump. Thought A. S. What A. Some people A. Say A. A. So I think, A. Mr. Sanders added, A. We re going to play it out A. Ms. Warren has gained on Mr. Sanders in some polls as both fight for the mantle of progressive standard-bearer. And in recent weeks, Mr. Sanders and his allies have appeared to take some oblique swipes at her. Ms. Warren will be on stage Wednesday while Mr. Sanders won't a t appear until Thursday a but it is worth watching whether Ms. Warren, directly or implicitly, proactively moves to draw contrasts with Mr. Sanders. She has been more open in her differences with former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr., criticizing his high-dollar fundraising and his references last week to working with segregationists during his time in the Senate. Mr. Biden won't a t be on stage with Ms. Warren either, but it will be notable if she sharpens her argument against him on Wednesday. Telemundo will be the first Spanish-language network to co-host a Democratic presidential debate, bringing the candidates to thousands of Latino living rooms across the country and bringing Latinosa concerns to prime time. If there is a moment to address Latino voters, Ida s this one. Moderators and candidates might frame their questions and responses to address the concerns of the Latino community a lot more than usual. Immigration and the border and family separations are sure to come up. Health care and job security A Latino voter's biggest concerns is likely to come up as well. Spanish sprinkled answers are to be expected, especially from Mr. Castro and Mr. O. A. Rourke. The debate will not just occur live on national television. It will be discussed, digested, and shaped simultaneously on the second screen of Twitter. Number Dem Debate is the official hashtag. And every campaign knows it. Agile campaigns these days write numerous tweets, both for themselves as campaign officials and for influential outsiders who might amplify their message or big moment. Are you watching the debates? We re eager to hear from our readers. Please tell us in the comments what you think of the candidatisa performances. For Democrats, who did you did you support going into the debates? Has that changed? If so, tell us why. We want to hear from Republicans, to a who has stood out to you? Did any of the candidates resonate with you or seem to pose a serious threat to President Trump's re-election bid? We may feature your comments in upcoming stories. Please include your name, where you live and what party you are re-registered with.